Hey, Sooner fans. Just so you know, right now, this is pretty much maybe the podcast of the century. Uh, <laughs> you know, the, there's there's very few times when two entities come together and make a you know great stamp on the earth. But the Boomer Boys are here with us. In the podcast palace. In the podcast palace. Boomer Boys! <laughs> so guess who that was? That was Brett. And we got Brad from the Boomer Boys. Boomer guys. Sooner. <laughs> <laughs> this is a little bit different setup than we normally yeah. have. So we're going to get used to it. Right? I'm so relaxed. I'm on a couch. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can put your feet up on that. Yeah, you can put your feet oh, up yeah. on that. And you don't yeah, have to take you. subtle shots at my <laughs> podcasting room, Brad. <laughs> just because I put you in a storage facility well, no, I, and we're I, sitting I, on a cat crate. Maybe that was an indirect com- or a compliment to you because it keeps me on my game. Because we're right up now. I'm like, hey, how you doing? Hey, we, we, you know, gonna... When we first started doing this, we were trying to be like really professional. I put a little table in here had the mics on these little stands and we were sitting here and uncomfortable chairs. I was sitting on one of these, I would sit on one of those little bills. And one day I was just sitting here and I was like, the hell with this. I'm bringing the chairs back in here. These mics can connect to anything in the room pretty much. And we kick back and, you know, just try to, you know, relax while we do this. And, and we don't get to watch a football game when we do. Our- <laughs> we do not. <laughs> yeah, we, we got do the, not. You know, there's a there's a lot of times though. Rob gets like sidetracked, and he is completely watching the football <laughs> game or baseball game, and people will ask him something, and and I'll have to like throw something at him. It's like, Rob, dude. <laughs> well, in my defense, I was watching Yankees Red Sox last night, and. Walter White was there, and I was like, dear, dear, dear. <laughs> and they asked me a question while I was going, dear, dear, dear. Was like, <laughs> yeah, you know, we had, I was uh, like, what, I didn't, I didn't hear what he said, yeah, uh, we had Adrian on, we were doing the, her, her beer segment, oh, right, and she was, you know, Rob starts looking, I'm sitting here, and I'm just kind of turn around, and I lose track, and then she asked him something, like, Rob, I was like, Rob's watching baseball, and, and he just, he was like a teenage girl seeing the Beatles, he, when he saw Walter White, well, we're big, game. Breaking Bad fans, Terry and I. Oh, yeah. perfect. Okay. Yeah. Well, I can tell you guys are better for it. Like the the comfortability is awesome. Uh, <laughs> no, thank you. And and then that's one of my favorite things about your guys' podcast is that it's not cookie cutter like everything else. Like you're just real people doing real stuff, yeah. and that's my kind of thing. Just having fun, just like you guys do, right? And yeah. I'm glad we yeah. took our time so you can take it all in because yeah. if i were to come in here we just start right away i'm still looking around and go wow yeah. oh there's, there's an iron maiden that? posting there yeah, too? Like, Whoa. <laughs> yeah. johnny ha- cash is looking at me yeah like, johnny cash you know there's roughneck gun roughneck gun there's some m&ms the m&ms rob doesn't like me right I got yeah, <laughs> a little creepy. A little creepy. don't be don't hating know. on my everybody hates on my m&ms i like m&ms yeah, look, they're cool yeah. you should put a sooner jersey on one like that's a good idea i have to find one be cool. but mm-hmm. um no, we got a little bit of memorabilia from, you know, got all Jack this time. Jack Lambert staring at me. Yeah, Jack Lambert. Uh, uh, got pictures with Big Ben before he was, uh, uh, no, it was after he was, you know, almost gone to jail for, oh. uh, <laughs> but Juju Smith-Schuster, met him at the. And he's having a hell of a year. Oh, he, he is. He's a good, he's a good guy too. And he, he was, funny thing was we wore, we had his jerseys on it and it was at the draft and we didn't know he was going to be there. And we just so happened that he was there signing autographs at the Ford place. And we come walking in, and it, he was like, oh, we and my wife both wearing his jersey. And he was like, you got my jerseys on. He gave us a, both a big old hug. And he was only signing one thing, and he signed. We had a little helmet that's up there, and he signed both of our – he wanted to sign our jersey. He's like, turn around, let me sign your jersey. And I was kind of like, what if I don't want him to right. sign my jersey? Because <laughs> do now I kind of can't wear this jersey anymore because you signed it and it cost me $130. And That's right. So, but and you might pan out, not pan out to be anything worth <laughs> making. <laughs> so, but pretty talented. Who's so. that? Uh, never mind that yeah. jersey. <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, I mean, yeah, I'm, a, I'm, a, I've never, you know, held it back that I'm a huge Steeler fan. Sure. I am not a Browns fan. Well, yeah. He was last night, though. By proxy, I mean, you're a Baker fan. I'm a so Baker you're fan. You're going to be rooting yeah. for the Browns at some point. No, no, I root for Baker. I never root for the Browns, okay? <laughs> <laughs> to be clear. Understood. So it, would be, it would be like if, 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 you know, your brother went to Oklahoma State and played football. You know, what would you do? I already don't like my brother. <laughs> so if he did that, then it's, sh- it's yeah. cool, you know. But, I mean, that's how I look at it is I'll root for him. Last night he played a hell of a game. 
you know, happy for him. But for those listening, I love my brother. He's here, so I decided to take a jam. But um, no, it's just you know, I, I I want him to do well. I just don't want the Browns to do well. Mm. So understand. I'm not sure you can have both, Terry. Yeah, I can, Rob. It's my world. Let me live in it. Damn okay. it. <laughs> so, but um, anyway. So why the hell did you guys bring all the rain into Oklahoma with you from Arizona? That's true. You guys are the same thing. Well, I was actually going to say, did you hear the sentence that you just said? <laughs> yeah. We brought rain from Arizona. We don't. Yeah. But sure enough, no, you're right. It was it was raining when we left, and Brad called me and was like, "This is what we're going to see." And I was like, "We're going to fly up. right over it, and when we land, it's going to rain." Yeah, yeah. That's exactly, <laughs> exactly what, what happened. 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 Exactly what happened. Yeah. Oh, it picked up some, or it saved some, because it was just sprinkling in Phoenix, and it's been yeah, today, today has was... been. Just a downpour. Yeah. Today was bad. Well, there was some, uh, I think it's Fitztown down by Ada. They had 12 inches of rain today. Holy moly. Yeah. That's I mean, a lot it, of rain. Yeah, it shut down. Like The town of Sulphur is flooded. Um, Ada oh. is flooded. They yeah, I mean, were letting schools out because the schools. Of rain is yeah. It's hide ridiculous. The, the Not a lot of cities are built to handle a foot of rain no. at one time, yeah. But, it, you know, so it kind of put a damper on our stuff tomorrow, but we, you know, quickly adjusted. And got our friends at Buffalo Wild Wings to give us the patio and the, and ha- uh, it, it looks like it may be the whole bar. They may not have a choice because there's a lot of people coming. Everybody yeah. started posting on that. I'll be there. I'll be yeah. there. I was like, okay. I told them thirty to fifty. So we're hey. sooners. Yeah. We, I, that was my first when I said. I hope that's a big place. Yeah, it, it is. is. It's a big one. It, it, we're okay. sooners. We adapt and we play like yeah. champions <laughs> at all times. So. But, you know, because the ground around there, Rob was talking about all around the stadium. There was like a, when you left work, wasn't there like a foot of water, you said? So everywhere? there's a couple of uh, the grass lots where people park, they closed them. So, yeah, because, mm-hmm. you know. Now, so. the forecast for tomorrow is that it's supposed to let up mid afternoon. Yeah, around noon, Actually, to, noon heard, to two. I've heard it's going to be before that. Yeah. Oh, even before that? Yeah. Between 10 and well, 10 it was and even just pulling up to the house here. I was telling my brother as we were walking in, yeah. it, it already looks like it's kind of passing through. Yeah. But, as far as the stadium is concerned, Rob, like what does the rain today have to do with playing conditions tomorrow? I mean, is it pretty well built to handle nah, that? that? That field doesn't even puddle. Oh, right. <laughs> it, don't, it don't even puddle, man. Awesome. It's right it's right off of it. awesome. I'm sure it'll be a little bit. You know, but where it does right puddle there. is right where my feet are in my seat. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> There's a dip right there. and I ever, it, Where's your seat? Uh, northeast corner, about halfway up. What section, section is that? 24. 24. Yeah. But yeah, it was like the the UCLA game. We come and every, you know because it rained the day before and stuff. And I come walking up, everything was dry except my seat. <laughs> what was the? It was a cross country run for the first one for UCLA, and then as soon as you lost shoot. me at run. So, uh, <laughs> but the the next one he goes, oh now we're going to do the St Jude. Yeah, because uh, that's two weeks later. That's a night game for for Army. Perfect. I even went on like a recruit and said I have decommitted from UCLA weekend. I have now. I uh, thank you all, my family and friends, but I am I now that. fully I'm committed to the, the Army, Army weekend. You know, so yeah, we we've had fun with it. And the uh, the biggest thing this every year, I, yeah, the biggest thing I think it was the night game is you know it's fun to say that I think for me it just worked out better schedule wise. Yeah, uh, my wife had some trips that, and I really wanted her to experience an OU game. It just made it made it easier for me. Uh, to be able to make it this week rather than last weekend. Right. So. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, the like I said, I know that the university is going to have a lot of pomp and circumstance before, and it'll it'll be really cool. It's, I've been looking forward to this game since last year at the yeah. end of the year just because of that. Well, and it's it's a different game, right? Yeah. It's not just your traditional stuff. Like, you, it, we don't play Army often. You, there's history with Army. Uh, you know, a lot of Sooners, there's very few Sooners I've ever met that are not, like, very pro-military. And you'll be hard-pressed to find the Sooner fans that have zero military in their family. No, yeah. Correct. <laughs> I mean, you see what I'm Exactly. Saying. Yeah. 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 So this is something special. Yeah. But, um, so, here's the, you know, we were talking about it on Wednesday. Is it wrong? Do you feel bad about rooting against Army? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You don't feel bad? No. Well, I mean, I mean, you feel a little when we get to our unpatriotic, right? When we get to our predictions, I mean, I don't think that Lincoln's going to go and just no, go not. full bore and try to run right. at level ten the entire. I think he's going. We're going to see some backups and yeah, and uh, there's no reason to try to get to the sixties or fifties. Well, you brought up the the uh, Air Force game uh, when y'all played up there. Teddy Lehman on the coaches show. Mm-hmm. Um, 
the other night or on the huddle that they do before the coaches. So he talked about that game and he said that, you know, and I'm sure Lincoln does the same thing. He said that Coach Stoops made it clear that this isn't a regular type game. This isn't, you know, that, and basically the trash talk was off the table. Yep. You know, you go out, you do your job and he goes, and they taught us about the military Academy during that week. This is yep. what these guys are doing. And he said, there was, there were, you know, you made a tackle, you got up and you walked off. You didn't, you didn't jaw. He goes, it was just a whole different preparation and and how they prep, prepared for it. I'll say this is uh it, it's, I don't think they're mutually exclusive, right? This is a, this is a football game, right? right? Mm-hmm. So you're rooting for your football team to win. That doesn't mean we want these guys to go out and do their service and not come back right. or, you know, it's just, it's not the same thing, right? right? So it's, yeah. there's nothing wrong, I think about that but my when when you say that to me the first thing that pops into my mind is does that change the game a little bit because a lot of kids especially if you look at our team this year we've got a lot of guys that are that feed off mm-hmm. of the jawing and broils and get right, right. broils yep. bookie yep bookie excuse me um, <laughs> okay I know. university Oklahoma, of Oklahoma. university yep. if university you guys listen to our podcast i'm just a big idiot all the time uh, i purposely don't wear anything oh you because they'll say oklahoma university I just, it's true and then people get really angry like really angry um but i'm but, i but just you're right we may not have that uh you know, Edge. we have just to go a bunch in. of pretenders type yeah. <laughs> of speech before we go out and take the field. Well, yeah. not only that, but we have to go into a against a physical, disciplined team and try to play physical and discipline by removing, if that's the case, and that's how we we approach it, by removing the things that generally make us yeah. play that yeah. way. Yeah, take out the attitude or the between play attitude. Well, but. I can obviously we we did really well in defense when we played Air Force, and I got to fun fun little story because after the day after sunday i back when we read newspapers i read an article with the the quarterback just casually back when we read newspapers yeah who does yeah (laughs) so so the quarterback was interviewed for air force the next day and they go through this training where in the air force they drop you into the woods Mm -hmm. on like a friday night like you're shot down at night and you got to make it to a certain checkpoint by Sunday afternoon. Right. And it, like this, the, the ACP or whatever, whatever acronym they use for it. And he, and he goes, you just faced Oklahoma's defense. Which one was tougher? And he goes, oh, sir. But by far, it was the University of Oklahoma's defense. <laughs> 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 so I was like, well. Yeah. Well, let's know. hope that's the same sentiment tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think, I mean, I think it is. But I, I think. It's just, you know, I mean, if you've, if here in town, you've heard the stuff on the radio, you've heard the, you know, on, and on Twitter, but they play, they've shown the, uh, the clips of the players talking about, you know, Coach Kish coached at Army mm-hmm. and told them what, what these guys, they're every day, you know, they're up at five in the morning and they're in bed at 11 at night. It's all day long and football is a tiny part of that and i think that's what they're talking about is that they teach them the respect of these guys aren't just football players yeah you're going to go out there take their heads off whatever you got to do but when you do that just shut up and go back and you know what i mean it's you know have a have a respect football may be only a tiny part but the rest of the time they're being taught how to kill me (laughs) i mean there's that so don't talk smack Smack. royals (laughs) yeah because saying you know you never know you know the knife has chop (laughs) yeah well i mean i put out on on twitter the other day it's like i I was trying to do some research you know trying to be a pro trying to find out about the team and so i was clicking on their links you know Mm -hmm. to the players and it would either come up page not available or um oh when it would pull up it would say that they're uh oh or when they go to when they go to school they're what they're studying for is und- un- undetermined. Undeclared? Yeah, undeclared. You know, every one of them are like that. I was like, okay, either every one of these guys are special <laughs> ops. Yeah. You know, right. <laughs> We're not well, telling you what they're studying. Right, right. And you the, can't get to their page. To t- <laughs> the one thing that I, when I looked at their roster, everybody's from everywhere. Oh, yeah. It's, it's amazing <laughs> to see. Like, you know, you look at a Florida roster, you're going to see it. Yeah, a ton a, of Florida a guys. Yeah. amount of Florida kids or California, Texas. But I'm like, man, there's some Oklahoma guys, there's yeah. some New Hampshire, there's some Oregon guys, they're, they're all over the place. And, and you know, I'm, you got to have that type of respect for them because why, why, knowing that regiment and knowing what you're signing up for afterwards, 
is why would you go there? You know what I yeah. mean? Because it, it is a completely, you know, I mean, and we know it. I mean, Oklahoma players, Texas players, they spend an awful lot of time on football. It's yeah. not, you know, football is not a small part of their life at, at OU. It's a big part of their life. Their right. studies are number one. Oh, for sure. But football is a big part. You would think, you know, you you got to respect those kids for going, you know what? Yeah, I want to play college football. But then they're I'm, going. Yeah, I want to serve my country and get an education. Right. You That's just, that's a type of commitment you Knowing don't see. Knowing that pro is not, I, yeah, I'm not doing something when I'm done with football. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. there's yeah. levels yeah, to it, right? They know where yeah. I'm going. Yeah. yeah, there's levels to it, and that's the next level. Like, I, I think about it, and we've talked about it. I think we talked about it last time on, on well, I was on your guys' podcast, is just to be a student athlete and how difficult that right. is. Mm-hmm. Just in and of itself, right. and what our guys are right. doing. But then you're talking about exactly what you're touching on, adding right. another a, level. A student of athlete, soldier, soldier, <laughs> warrior. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know. But uh, you, yeah. I think you nailed it. Respect is the key word. Right. You just play with respect. You know, th- we're, this isn't Texas. We hate Texas. Yeah. We want to spit on them while they're down, right. and I'm cool with that. Yeah. <laughs> you know. But at Army, you know, let's help them up. Yeah. Let's get back to the let's go. Notes. You know, go do your job. I think is the the attitude it is, and I'm like you. You know what? When if if it turns out like we're playing, you know, like FAU, you know, or we we're up, you know, twenty eight to nothing going into the second quarter. How quick does does Lincoln pull the plug? Does he pull it then? Because you know we got conference play kicking up next week. Yeah. I mean, he's already shown to pull it pretty early, yeah. Right, and in a lot of you know those, the whole second half is our second and third guys. Yeah. And uh, so I, I, I would I would say that that's probably what had happened. I mean, if we're up at halftime and we've got a clear lead, I think you're going to see our second and third guys yeah. come in. And, and so you right. think, but like a, like FAU, I mean, they pulled the first string out in the fir- in the second quarter, halfway through the second quarter. Do you think he, you think it's going to be third quarter? That's it. Maybe a maybe a series. In well, the I, I'm reserved to say that that'll be it. If we're winning handedly, yeah. I think that'll be it. I'm worried that you know the weather and it being a colder yeah. you know weather yeah. game and. And that, just the atmosphere that it may be a little bit closer than than I hope for, yeah. and obviously in that case we wouldn't. Right. But, um, I just think Lincoln's shown that he's he's a little bit more apt than Bob was to, to pull the plug. <laughs> yeah. Right. Bob. Yes. Yeah, Bob, Bob will, didn't ever pull the plug. Never. No. You're right. Seventy plus or five games with seventy seconds? plus in 08? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. you know. Barry would pull up Barry. Yeah. I remember Barry's famous. Hey, hey, second, third string, they lift the same amount of weights. Yeah. They, they want to go score too. So let's get him in there. Yeah. You know, let them go play, you know, but, um, yeah, I'm with, the, you know, that's my thoughts b- before the season were all these first four games are going to be tight. I thought they're going to be better games than what they were. The Iowa state game was about what I thought it was going to be. Yeah. I mean, I, I everybody seemed shocked and, you know, and then, you know, butt hurt about the score and everything else. But it's like, what did you expect? They beat us last year. I mean, come on. So, well, my expectation was, and I, I am, I'm a very over the top person. If you don't already know, <laughs> but my expectation was that this was a revenge game. We were, we had it circled and we were going to take care of business. Right. And, and I think we did that. I think even the game itself was a lot closer than it should have been. And we, we do what Oklahoma does sometimes. And we, put ourselves we play to our competition right and and unfortunately you know that made it a, a little bit closer game um but i i going into the army game I, I think the same way you know if we play well and we do what we're capable of doing it's not going to be a competition right and but whether that happens or not it's a totally different thing <laughs> you know and i see things on twitter where they're saying you know if duke can hold them to a hundred and <sighs> 20 yards on the ground or whatever. Well, Duke <laughs> plays Georgia Tech every year. Yeah. So and Georgia Tech has. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. Georgia Tech has power five talent. Right. So it may take us two series on defense. They may, they may, right. you know, get down the field a little bit on us. And then we go, okay, now we're picking up the rhythm. Now we kind of get their little, their cadence, their, their play action. Okay. And then we're filling lanes and then we start to shut them down. Yeah. Don't be freaked out if, if they have, you know, 10 points in the first half. Yeah. Well, but you know, Duke also it's turned out not to be quite a, you know not Cut they're pretty good and coach man. <laughs> what, who, they're a pretty who good little team right I now. I hate but. people so much. <laughs> I hate people so much because football is not a sport that because you did X, Y is going to happen. The transitive property doesn't work well in football. Right. You played and lost to Duke, 
and then the next week you came and you beat a really good Hawaii team. Right. Let's not overstate how good Hawaii right. was, right? The, the week-to-week thing doesn't work. You can't say uh, Texas fans are notorious for this, right? I think we've been interacting with them this week. Well, we played a ranked team, and we beat a ranked team. Yeah, okay, well, USC shouldn't have been ranked, <laughs> number one. You've mentioned Texas twice now. <laughs> I'm mad. Hey, winning's hard. Winning's hard. Yeah, yeah. it is. <laughs> I, I just hate when people do that. It drives me crazy. It's one of the, the conversations that I hate getting into on Twitter is when you're trying to be reasonable and rational and take a look at this game from a logical perspective, and then people pull just crap into yeah. it and just make stuff up. Well, I mean, that's one of the things that I did want to talk about with you guys about because you know you and I kind of interacted on some stuff on Twitter was the tackling issue. Okay, mm-hmm. now. You know, I had several discussions, and I'm not going to change anybody's mind on Twitter. Nobody's going to change my mind. That's why I don't get into a lot of this. It's just like, hey, it's your deal. I'll go Smart for a little man. bit, you know. Smart. And, but Me here, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at Brett right now. I'm ready to go. I don't care. But, you're an idiot. You're an idiot. No. You know, tack, tackling, okay, I don't care what anybody tells me. I, You know, I played football at a very low level, okay, a 4A school in Oklahoma, McAllister Buffaloes, okay? But tackling, everybody's like, well, tackling is coaching. Yeah, when you were in the fifth grade, yep. they taught you how to tackle, and they you. taught you how to tackle right. I love you. <laughs> okay? I love you so This much. crap we saw Saturday, yeah. that it's laziness. It's yeah. effort. And Jason uh, from the Brainiacs one time, he, he was talking about the, the, the Rose Bowl game. He said you saw – laziness and lack of effort in the tackling in the third quarter exactly right okay he goes and it's right tackling is coached when you were in in the fifth grade if you want to take a guy down you'll take him down right there's not been any wonderful developments in tackling since (laughs) football has been created and you're right with effort because hakeem butler he wanted to push him off right he did he did I mean, it's called a battle, and yeah. you lost. <laughs> yeah. So, but, but when you know, it when you have four guys bounce off of a receiver who scores a touchdown, yep. and not one of them wrap their arms around them, that's not coached. You're not going to tell me. And I don't care if anybody loves or hates Mike Stoops. Right. You're not going to tell me that Mike Stoops is sitting there going, "That was a good effort." I don't know that if you saw my tweet, job. but I was like, "Oh, Mike Stoops just bit on a double move." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! I hate you. Let's fire him and get him out. You know, and that's yeah. the thing. And I think, I think, as with all things in life, it's a balance of things. I think there's definitely some contribution from Mike Stoops that may cause some difficulties on our defense throughout the years. Right. But to be able to to try and think that it's just Mike, and that if we get somebody else, that magically we're going to be, you know, a top ten rated defense in this league. I just think it's irrational. Well, yeah, you know, but you look who you, the position that Mike coaches, and he's the defensive coordinator, mm-hmm. but he's also the linebackers, linebackers coach. Did we see? Did we have a problem with our linebackers making tackles? Bolton spend the backfield all day. Yeah, oh. wrapping up, yeah. putting you know. Now Murray. catching the ball. <laughs> 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 but but I, I I said to Brett early in one of our podcasts, I said I don't want to just beat people, but I want to have a game where we win. But we got stuff to work on. Yeah, and I think we got that right. with Iowa State because you'll see a guy like Nick Saban. He'll find stuff wrong, and they won by 50. Right. And he comes in that press conference, that and he's about to throw that Coke <laughs> bottle at somebody he's so mad. And you're like, you're the best <laughs> team, and what the heck's going on? So, And I think he pulls his guys when he plays the Western Carolinas mm-hmm. and the Citadels. He loves a 27-8 to 8 game, and people go, well, I, they should have just blown. So he can rip the crap out of his yeah. players all week because yeah. he doesn't want them to get well, complacent. I mean, after the UCLA game, the first thing Lincoln said was it was an average – Offensive output. We were in the wrong positions. Yep. We did a lot of stuff wrong. You know, not my my point though was I was tired of and I didn't see all the stuff. Caleb, when we were leaving to go to the fair, actually said, "Good God, I've never seen people so pissed off about a win." And I was yeah. like, "What?" Because I hadn't even been on Twitter. Yep. People are just like ripping. And we went to the fair and did all that. And I came back and I thought, you know, got home and I pulled up. I was like, "Holy crap!" I'm glad I went to the fair. Because I would have had to drive to somebody's house with a baseball bat and hit them in the head going, what are you talking about? Yeah. Come on, guys. Well, and the frustrating thing about it for me is that it, it seems we're so quick with our criticisms of the defense, but we, our offenses, you know, we put them on a platter. And even even like you right. said, there's 
specific evidence that our offense didn't play that well right. against Iowa State. But nobody's willing to say that because we love Lincoln Riley. Right. We love Kyle well, And Murray. I put that we point love- out there was, was why is it that Iowa State has held us two years in a row under 40 points? Last year they held us under 30. Yeah. This year they held us under 40. They're the only, they're only one other team that did that, and that was Texas last year. I mean, so why isn't everybody hollering at Lincoln going, why aren't you putting up 60 points on Iowa State? And I was telling Brett, we don't know what Iowa State is. Yeah. They go out and win nine games this year. That's <laughs> well, a hell of a road win by ten. But right. if you use the transitive property, <laughs> but they but, lost it. And, and the second point is three missed tackles. Yeah. And 360 yards passing would have been about 220, 230. Mm-hmm. And it's just a regular old yeah. 20 point win. Right. 21 point win. Yeah. And everybody's, ha- well, guess what? We missed some tackles and we still won. Right. Last year's defense, I don't it, it know. Didn't do, that didn't Probably happen. not. We talked about it, but, you know, a lot of people go back to Iowa and be like, oh, they only scored three points on Iowa. So why isn't our. De-? That's a rivalry game. And it's the, the first game of their season because their first game got, got canceled. Hurt. Right. Quarterback the second gets string hurt. didn't run with the number ones all week. He gets shoved in there. And not right. to mention, I posted uh, the stats from Hakeem Butler's game in Iowa and he had five dropped balls. Uh, you you can't ignore a performance. Hakeem yeah. Butler came into Oklahoma with his hair on fire. We yeah. get everyone's 110% right. if there is such a thing. Yeah. Everybody's national Every time. championship. Yeah, everybody. When's your bowl game when uh, the guys from Norman come to town? Yeah. Right. The, That's our bowl game. We are circled on everybody's, everybody's. On everybody's And why? Because – we're uh, I'm sorry. There's never been two teams to go to the playoff from our conference. Every other conference has two teams. <laughs> we are the Big 12. Yeah, that's it. So you want to beat Oklahoma. the guy that is the Big 12. That yeah. puts your name and out it, in front. it probably comes off as arrogance to other fans, but a lot of I, when we're talking to other fans, a lot of times I get, at least when I get somebody that's semi-reasonable, they say, well, we just don't understand why you're so confident. And the confidence comes from knowing those things and then that we still put up 10 wins. Right. Yeah. Every single year right. we yeah. put up 10 wins. Our, our bad, bad season, season is eight. <laughs> is eight, and that's what you're hoping for. Texas a and is hoping and praying for eight wins uh, this year. Yes. Right. And that's our worst season <laughs> Right now in they're going, decades. if we can get to eight, then we can continue to pay him and not have to get another oh, coach. Yeah. Right now, they're worried about getting embarrassed tomorrow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but gonna they're happen, going, well, we had, what we've happens had if they good play success close? with former OU coaches. Maybe we just go up with the Briggs <laughs> truck to Norman. He's out. Oh, my, oh my God. Oh, we are, oh he oh, got up. Oh, oh. We, Sorry, guys. We're, we got the football <laughs> game on. <laughs> he, he popped up and goes, I hear no bell. One more round. You don't know where we're he's at right FAU. now. Look uh, at this. Yeah, we're going to watch this. Sorry. We're, we're, we're going to play by play. Over the middle. Over the middle. Because no, boom. boom. He gone. No. Are they going <laughs> to call that, that, are they gonna call that targeting? Yeah, they threw yeah, a flag. Absolutely. Yeah, they're definitely going to call it targeting. So you think uh, A&M can keep it close on Alabama? No, no, no. I don't. <laughs> but I'm just saying, what happens if they do? when we get to the If they do, according to A&M, that's a championship, oh, absolutely. and we're never gonna hear the end of it. They're gonna fly some banners after that. One. <laughs> I mean, they, they already did it with the Clemson game, right? A and M. We're saying we're like we've been there, done that. Look, yeah. I mean, but they're in a win-win situation. Yeah. Sure. I mean, we get blown out. What's well, Alabama? Yeah. Ooh, we lost by eight. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> we're back, baby. We're gonna win the national championship. <laughs> That's seven point five million a year worth every penny mm. for Jimbo. So, for Jimbo. Well, and they're, they're, what are they paying, um, Schmitty? I mean, he got like he got some money. Yeah, he got like double what Oklahoma was playing. Paying, yeah, you it's know? so yeah. funny because there were so many Sooner fans who was like, "Well, you know, he's he's just tired of Oklahoma." No, he got paid yeah. double. Yeah, <laughs> it's a business <laughs> decision. <laughs> Stop. Well, why didn't Oklahoma came back and offer him? Because they're not going to pay you that much exactly. for a strength and conditioning coach. Exactly. You know, I mean, he'd been here for what twenty eighteen years. Okay. He'd been yeah, here with since Bob yeah. ninety nine. You know, and uh, who wouldn't? If yeah. somebody walked into you your get job in there and said, and "Get with Schmitty, we're going to double yeah. your salary, Terry." Yeah, and do the same job you're doing here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. See ya. It's funny that people that like the things that they'll apply to their own life, they won't apply to other right. people's life, and they think because it's college football, it's like this fairy tale land that like these things don't exist. And it's like, like, oh wait, you wouldn't accept a job for your competitor's company. At double the price right now, <laughs> if that offer was on the table, like you would be like, no, I'm loyal to my co- – shut up. You're a liar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so where was I going to go with this? I was I fixing just, a anywhere you want to. Jimbo yeah. Fisher get, does the same thing Bob Stoops. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Jimbo's going to make it pants. I just well, know. Well, I, I wonder if he says, you know, you got to get into the – Just the, shut up and do it. Do what? Jimbo. 
Jimbo Fisher? <laughs> hey, you going to get in the weight room with Schmitty? <laughs> Do some reps? Come on. I got my bag man waiting for you. you better not. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's Jimbo. Jimbo. Bob, Bob would say, "You you got to get in the white room with Schmitty's. Have a chance to be something special." <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good. That's yeah. pretty good, isn't it? That's pretty good. That's pretty, pretty good, isn't it? You know, I don't know all you media types out there. I, it doesn't matter what I say. So, uh, you're gonna write what you're gonna write anyway. In, anyway, so. Yeah, Bob. Bob. At the end of the day. Yeah, at the end of the day, it really doesn't Bob, matter. Rick. I'm just gonna stick my little pinky out here and. Make fun of you guys in the media, <laughs> Bob. Really, uh, when when recruiting made the change to like Twitter and and Snapchat and Facebook, like how did that make you feel? I went and hired a guy named Lincoln Riley. I don't know how to do any of that stuff. The, all that chat, snap, snap book and face chat, you guys can have all that stuff. <laughs> That's pretty good. It's pretty hey, Lincoln's good. pretty good at it too, though, right? Yeah. <laughs> trying to get my switzer down but that's tough yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then then lincoln does lincoln's he says yeah. tremendous a lot yeah and, you know danny he's a low, lower register tremendous and the way he says two he goes he's like two <laughs> yeah i mean a little, he a little, does have a weird two i've i've yeah. been trying to listen to it now because i yeah now I, I will be too so <laughs> yeah he say tremendous tremendous is like his go-to oh yeah that's tremendous i mean the, that, the way it he, must be a mule shoe texas it, kind yeah of like texas <laughs> he's got that twang and yeah bob's got that you know i tell you what man like uh uh john gruden like yeah. he's you know <laughs> you listen to mark stoops i heard him on the radio on ESPN U Radio uh, in the morning show I listen to when I'm driving around and uh, and Mark's got the cadence it's it's the stoop steel it's a stoop steel yeah <laughs> anyway and anyway <laughs> he always, yeah uh, anyway and then there, but then there is you know Mike doesn't have that no Mike, Mike's like the he is kind of like the the kid that got hit in the head one too many times, kind of. All right, we're bashing Mike Stoops again. <laughs> no, I'm not here bashing. Hey, that's my brother. No. <laughs> we're not ba- one of the radio. Ladies stations. and gentlemen, R.J. Young is here with us in the studio. <laughs> no, I'm not bashing. We, they, they have they have one of when they have their Thanksgiving deal. The Thanksgiving with the Stoops is what oh, they yeah, call it. Yeah. Oh, right, right. Yeah, and 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 they always the have real m- palace on the prairie. Bob's yeah. house. Yeah, <laughs> but they always have the, you seen it yeah. when oh, they have God. Mike when the guy that does Mike's voice. It's it's always like the the goofy dog character on it hey uh yeah let's play football that's all. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good <laughs> all right. I'm not gonna lie. we got a lot of talent in this room <laughs> oh yeah but no i've always you know let's talk about the defense i want to talk about the defense with you guys because you know we call it drinking the defense of kool-aid okay <laughs> and, and it's still in the picture at this house nah, i drink it yeah. no you drank it no what i said 38 to 3 at iowa state Obviously, I drank the Kool-Aid. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 38 to 3. Tasted good Saturday Rob, morning. Rob, Rob, good Saturday afternoon. <laughs> Rob drank the Kool-Aid and ate the Kool-Aid. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, because I've, you know, and I say that because I've drank the Kool-Aid too, year, too early every year. Last year, Iowa State. I mean, uh, Ohio State. Yeah. You know, I was like, oh, my God. Me and Rob, you know, we were watching here at the house. I was like, there ain't nobody going to beat us with that offense and that defense. You well, know? We just punished a, a really good Ohio State team. Yeah. And well, you know what? I love the honesty and transparency that we get out of our coaches. Bob was like that, and Lincoln's very much like that. And I, I agree with Lincoln when Lincoln says, look, consistency is the key to what you guys are considering a good defense or not good defense, right. and and rightfully so. But you can't ignore some of our defensive performances over the last nope. two years. We have the capability, the athleticism, and the talent to play high-level defense with just about anybody in the country. Why we don't do that consistently, you know, there's a lot of things for that. And, and so I think you say you jump on too early. We played as good as we could play in Ohio State. Yeah. I go back and look at the TCU games last year, Mm -hmm. and our defense played really well. They played really, really well. Um, But then you look at Oklahoma State games, and we get into these, you know, Texas Tech games, and we get into these third quarter third quarter Rose Bowl, third quarter Rose Bowl. (laughs) But I think a lot of that has to do with, and I, I've, I've talked about this extensively. I think there's something with the attitude coming out of halftime. 
it was at I don't know if you guys saw it because you guys were there, but at the Rose mm-hmm. Bowl, like you you're just watching our guys coming out of halftime, and it's like, oh, we've won. Yeah, I'm ready for the national championship. And you look at Georgia coming out of halftime, and they're ready to take some heads off. Yeah, same thing at Iowa State. We score before half. We go in. We're getting the ball back, and we come out, and it's like. You know, this is the time right. to play your best, and we don't. And then that allows people to hang around. And when Brett said that to me, I said, do you think, because my theory was, look at how we beat TCU. We smoked them in the first half, and let's just kind of sit on the ball and coast to a victory. Yeah. You can't do that against really good teams. Right. You can do it against good teams. Not two first-round running backs. Exactly. Right. So right. I, I thought, man, are we a victim of being so good against TCU that we're like, oh, it's just another TCU. Let's just go out, well, run the ball even, a little bit. And, even Baker said that when he was on Cowherd's show um, a couple of months ago. They, yeah, they asked about back. yeah about the Rose Bowl game, and he said from top to bottom. I was kind of like, ooh, he just said that, you know, because he was like the coaching staff, the players. We all became complacent in the locker room at halftime, and we yeah. came out. You know, it was something to that effect. You like know, it was easier than we thought. Yeah, we you know, thought hey, this was big, bad number four defense. Right. And we sliced through them like a hot knife through butter. And we came out in the third quarter and got punched in the mouth. Yeah. And well, you play football and you play games, whatever game, whatever competition that you decide to do. Sorry, I was away from the mic. <laughs> uh, you do it to win. Right. So I'm just one of those people that I love a good defensive performance. It's one of my favorite things. I, it gets me pumped up. It gets me amped up. I love it. But I do not care what our rankings are. I don't care what the stats are as long as there's a W in that win column. Right. So if our defense is doing enough to get us wins with what we have, that's good enough for me. And I'm just not the type of person that's going to go back and be like, well, you know, I, it's good to be aware of it so you can work on it moving forward. But I, I'm just not going to be upset about it because we got to win. And that's why you play. Currently, right now, we're undefeated and we have the perfect right. path to the playoffs and until we lose one that doesn't change right so let's keep moving forward let's tackle better this week and let's get another freaking w yep. well but I, and i've always said rob and i have talked about this extensively is if our offense i mean if our defense holds anybody to 27 points or under 30 points yep. we're gonna win we're gonna win my with baseline this offense. for our defense is 28 or there less. you go yeah yeah, that's so my the, baseline. If you get 28, <laughs> we had an average performance on defense today. Anything yeah. under that, that's a good day. It's a good day. Yeah, absolutely. And if we and hope, in this conference, yeah. like we have elite skill positions in this conference, elite right. coordinators in this conference, conference. It's just unrealistic to expect SEC defense numbers because we're not playing SEC offenses. Right. So and that was someone said no one with a outside top 20 defense wins a national championship. Well, no one in the Big Twelve <laughs> has gotten a cha- you know gotten to the, the championship game right. to have a chance to win it because every team you're talking about plays in a bunch of conferences that don't have the arsenals right. that we play. Right, and then there's and, the politics that get two SEC teams I mean, in a national. Let's be honest: <laughs> if Georgia played in the Big Twelve, a Big Twelve season, they would not be the number four defense in the nation. No, it's that simple. No. So just like FAU had the number what eight overall offense, well, they don't play Power Five guys every week. <laughs> I hope they would. They should be yeah. number one. Yeah. Well, and I'm a conspiracy theorist too, uh, to the point where like maybe I'm just delusional, but I, I think that we were picked to play Georgia for a reason. I don't think anybody wanted us to see Alabama last year. In the first and round. quite honestly, yeah, right. the way the rankings should have went, we should have seen Alabama or Clemson well, yeah. instead of that's Georgia. That's funny because that's what Rob and I were talking about that last year. We're going to get Alabama, and I, I fully believe we would have spanked Alabama. Georgia yeah. had a, the only defense outside of the Big 12, outside of a TCU that was capable of really playing with us, I think. Yeah. Alabama's defense is incredible. You can't deny that, but they're built – to stop SEC right. offenses. And everybody that they struggled with were people that could throw the ball. And you bring a Baker Mayfield against an Alabama, and we're looking at a different outcome to that playoff. Right. I, think. I was really hoping that they'd pit the SEC teams against each other in the first round. They should have. Should have. Yeah. <laughs> should have. And give us Clemson. I mean, Please give me Clemson. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my, my dream scenario is either Alabama first round or in the championship game, and then Clemson either in the first round. Yeah. Or champion. Dude, I don't Alabama care. Clemson's who I want. Yeah. I, I don't, don't care don't. how we get Clemson. I know. Give me Clemson. <laughs> you were saying earlier, like, take a one-point victory. I was thinking of Lou Holtz. Like, you, know, both, you give me a you know, one-point victory every time. Hey, Brad. Uh, you call me national champion. Hey, Brad, I don't think you're 
your mic's working. I think you're going to have to carry it up to the end of the stadium, outside of the stadium, so you can get reception. Yeah, that's right. It's, uh, <laughs> hey, babe, I made it here safe. <laughs> it's but, really And, and uh, by the way, a side note, that, uh, that Air Force game, coolest halftime I've ever seen in my life. They have a the, the Falcon, yeah. so they actually bring out the bird. Cadet, whatever, with his little mic on. Hello, this is Bessie, and she's like the fourth generation, whatever. And we're going to do some aerial maneuvers for you folks today. And we're like, now what we need you to do is not put your hands up in the air like you're cheering, because Bessie reaches some speeds that will take your fingers clean off. And we're like, all right. And so we're watching this bird fly around the stadium, and at the end, after doing all these cool little flips and stuff. He sends her and he points straight up and she goes way up in this. I mean, way up in the sky. Guys have binoculars looking up. She's way up there and he waves his hand and slams it to the ground and she goes to a dive bomb and she's wow. dive bombing right at him. And right when this happened, the guy comes over with those shirt guns and grabs it and he shoots it and it's got a net in it. And when it when she grabs it, the parachute propels and as she's coming down, he's going. She's reaching speeds to where if she breaks a barrier, she can't pull out of it. She needs my help. And the guy runs out, hands him the gun. He fires it. She snatches it with her talents and the freaking thing. What? You know, <laughs> it sounds like. And, and I'm like, I don't know if you've ever seen that movie. Uh, I was going to say, it sounds like a really dope movie. Like like the movie, uh, the vampire movie where he goes down to Mexico and he's like, he gets up. That's a show. I'm, that's me. Like in the upper deck going, no, I've never seen it like that. Like, you know, that may be better than us kicking the crap out of them all afternoon. That was. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and then and she came down to the ground, and he wrapped that thing up. She hopped on his thing, and he gave us the old salute, and he bowed, and they were off. And I was like, that's the best halftime show I've seen. <laughs> I've seen a lot of games. A dude and his bird. And yeah. That- <laughs> yeah, that was, that was awesome. cool. So, And I, I was lucky. I when, when I went to school at OU, and then I worked at Jimmy Austin afterwards, I got to know a few of the golf or the, the football players. And unbeknownst to me that – everybody gets two tickets to every game. Well, a lot of these kids are from Florida or Georgia or California, and their parents never get to go. So my buddy on the football team would just say, you go to, you go to Lincoln, go to Will Call, and say this name and your name. And I did some third string backup left guard, and I said his name, and I'm Brad Johnson. Here's your ticket. I'm like, sweet. And, I, and I'm sitting with all the, the parents up in the section, so we'd be the only red, the crimson section, and, you know, up at Link, well, Lincoln, it's all red, but you know, um, I went to uh, I went to Baylor, I went to Texas Tech, I went to Colorado Springs for Air Force. I mean, it was fun. I went to like ten or twelve games straight. You can leave now. Yeah, yeah. And, and that and that's you know, I told him that story when we first started doing our podcast, and he so. tells it every time, and because he knows how much I hate and, it, and it, for I him, really I feel jealous. bad because I've been so fortunate. Yeah, and for yeah, a guy that are. loves OU as much as Brett to not to not be able to, I mean, he's legal. It's been 21 years since he's <laughs> seen us live. Years. It's true. <laughs> not it, since it, I've seen it live, just since I've been in Norman. Well, since you've been in Norman, but yeah. still, Home I game. am super jealous about that, yeah. and and that's kind of where I am in my life now. Anyway, as a Sooner fan, is I'm just to the ability where I can travel, and I'm really excited, like we were talking earlier, just to go see some some Sooner games each year that I can. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, like your Are birth we? was in 97, and you get to have a beer tomorrow. You're 21. <laughs> <laughs> You're close enough for me to fight in the, you. In the stadium right grew up. <laughs> fight you right here on air. You got a, you got a camera? Yeah. <laughs> Let's try that live stream yeah, now. Yeah, try a live stream now. <laughs> yeah. I got a bodyguard over there. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I do. Take I can tell brother. you what I, you know, we're not going down to the Texas game this year, but it's going to be a great day because we're going to kick Texas's ass. Yes. And then we're going to watch the Conor McGregor fight that yes. night. Oh, that's right. That's the same day. <laughs> it's the same day. Yeah. So that's going to be a long day of football, chili, beer, and fights. So so Sooner fans are like, you'll do nothing. you do nothing. <laughs> All afternoon at the, at the Cotton Bowl. That's a shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tom Herman comes out, who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> This yeah. is what I have to deal with yeah. all the time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the other day I was like, "It's it, he says it's gonna rain," and I was like, "Well, Tom Herman's in town." <laughs> <laughs> it's never ending, honestly, and I love it. I love everybody, it, oh. but it's never ending. So, uh, what we wanted to talk to you guys about, or not talk to you guys about, but we wanted to invite you guys to do is every week on Boomer Boys we do uh, pick them and we okay. look at the top. We only do top twenty-five, right? Yes. 
No, not even top twenty. What we did, just do top twenty five. Yeah, top twenty five matchups. We were just going to put Texas in there just to pick against them every week. But, yeah, but yeah. We, we decided not to do that, but, but no. some for some reason they're ranked in the top twenty five every week anyway. And we so. can discuss the <laughs> army game when we get to army on the pick them. Yeah, we can. Yeah, we can talk about I mean, it a little I just, bit. But. I wrote some things down as far as what they average. I mean, they average three hundred yards on the ground. Yeah, they average four hundred yards a game. So seventy five percent of their offense on the ground. And when they do go deep, they don't have a receiver that has caught a pass this year under 29.5 yards a right. catch. So when they go deep, they go deep. Right. Well, Mike said and, it in his uh, press conference, too, is that they're a little bit more proficient with that than they have been in years yes. past. So not watched, only does that happen, but they're better at doing it. their game. Um, they've won three games. I didn't watch Hawaii or Duke. I watched the – I can't remember the other team. They, but I watched a little bit of it. Liberty. And went – Liberty. Yeah. And Insurance Liberty company. beat somebody. Insurance company. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the good hands? No. That's, no. It's, it's one of them Liberty Insurance. That's that's, that's all one, we could figure that, out. Is that the one with the big, like, buck, the deer? Yeah. Or? Something like, I yeah. think so. Yeah. Which, yeah. It's the one, the like, the, the – well, They lost uh, Army. The Who preacher. Was, you know, pre- <laughs> what's it? Jerry Falwell. Jerry Falwell, that's his school. Yeah. Okay. Liber- yeah. Oh, well, they is? beat yeah. somebody. Wow. They beat Baylor last year. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well I, yeah. Baylor's the new Kansas. Okay. As you far just as said they beat somebody. Baylor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like that was. <laughs> We're about to get excited. Oh, that's a pre- Oh. Hey, that game is this week, too. Kansas-Baylor. For yeah. the for the basement, Kansas wins that. Twelve, yeah. Kansas. Well, let's, no. they're neither of them are ranked. Yeah. Are they? <laughs> really? <laughs> so no. 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 Okay, you just asked that question, Brett. Listen. Kansas and Baylor are either one of those ranked. They be just let me be me, Terry. State. Just let I me think be it's me. Just Nichols now. They just oh, took yeah. their state out. Yeah. Well, I still call. They're them like, hey, Texas. we beat Kansas. You call us Nichols. <laughs> so, so let's let's run through this. What we want to do is, and we want to invite you guys. So we have what we do is we keep score. Yep. Brad's winning. He's up by. three. Three games or four? Three? Three. Three games. So he's got over the course of the season so far. But we want to invite you guys to to jump in and pick the games this week and keep a tally. And maybe we'll send, if you guys win, maybe we'll send you something nice from Phoenix. All right. Is there anything nice in no. Phoenix? Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't send me a box of sand, okay? <laughs> there's, there's lots of gifted women there. I can't. I don't, I don't, I don't know, know if sending them will be a good idea. <laughs> 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 he t- he's not lying. You are a oh, snitch. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> he stirs the pot all the time. Yeah, man. Uh, he does that same stuff to me. <laughs> so, Brad, you want to you want to go down the line? Sure. Uh, well, we're watching the first game. Uh, unfortunately, I thought we were get on this. I pick early. UCF. I'm good. Yeah. No, UCF. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I think we can scratch that match. What, what's up. the point spread on that one? <laughs> No, we we just do straight pick them. Uh, oh. The game after this is, um, or it should be playing right now, Penn State, <laughs> number 10, Penn State, in Illinois. It is playing right now. Um, I don't know what the score is. The, did you see the, the scroll? No, the but I've seen, I seen that they were playing. Okay. Illinois? Yeah, I'm going to take Penn. Yeah, I'm going to do Penn State. I'm going to take State. Illinois. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Terry's starting off I don't, I don't living life on the edge. I don't think Penn oh. State's that good. USC, I don't think, I don't think they are either. But <laughs> USC, oh Hey, did you guys God. hear that Trace, Trace McSorley is this year's Baker Mayfield? <laughs> 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 I don't know if you heard. Yeah, I heard. <laughs> Penn State? Penn State. Terry going out on yeah, the a- lion eye. Uh, next one is uh, – mentioned Georgia Bulldogs, number two Bulldogs, and Mizzou. Georgia. Misery. That's an interesting mar- matchup, but I think Georgia's just too much. Bulldogs. Bulldogs. Another well-used mascot. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's the only – at the – uh, Rose Bowl when they brought him out, I had to get a picture of. Oh him. yeah, that's <laughs> cool. Yeah, he comes trotting out there. I was like, oh, there it is. It's fourteen to seven, second quarter. Penn State's not very good. I'm just gonna tell you. I that. don't think they're that but good either. We, but we neither didn't is Illinois. Know, so that's okay. We already, it's, <laughs> we're we're still good. It's and it's in. only the second quarter, so we've got a game yeah. to play. It can go either way. So, so th- that's um, those are the two top twenty-five games: uh, Penn State and, and of course UCF. And then Georgia starts off tomorrow at nine a.m. So does Notre Dame. At Wake Forest. Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Wake Forest. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> I like pick with you guys. Wake Forest. You guys are fun. I, I'm, I'm going to go Wake Forest, too. Wow, okay. We got it. At Wake Forest. Notre Dame has not looked good. No, yeah. but it's Wake Forest. I mean, we didn't yeah, know how good Forest. that well, first game was Michigan. So and we this, didn't, 
know how good Michigan was. Yeah, this is the week where you start figuring things out about teams. Yep. You know, you've got three games worth of data on them now, and they shut the quarterback down. It's Talk, over. Talking about figuring things out, <laughs> Nebraska travels to Michigan. Oh, Lord. Man, Nebraska is a – Terry goes. It's a dumpster uh, fire. It's a dumpster <laughs> fire, and it, and you know what? I feel bad because I love two fire extinguishers. Yeah. I love Frost, <laughs> and then you think I couldn't get, I couldn't help but get excited. Like, oh, Frost is going back to Nebraska. Like he's getting everybody, and then this is the first time they've been zero two and since nineteen fifty one. But, he, or but he took over a dumpster fire. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, for he sure. did. He's got to have time, and you know we play them in like what twenty twenty five or something. We play them a few times in the next ten or yeah. so years. Yeah, yeah. So so, Terry, so I'm picking this. not Nebraska. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and before we jumped in into your your layer here, we were talking about how if you go to Alabama for five years, there's a chance you'll never play one of the right. ACC teams from the East. Right. <laughs> we we play Tennessee a lot too coming up. <laughs> like in a ten year span, we play them like four times. Yeah. I Must mean, be some money involved in that deal. A lot of money. Well, we just like whipping up on the SEC. <laughs> you know. But yeah, I got Michigan. SEC's well. a joke. You know they get all over me for just telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> you better Google it on up. <laughs> Write the picks, Bob. I I ran into an Alabama fan. Nobody beats my team. Who's your team? I said Alabama. I said yeah, we're three and zero in the last seventeen years. Yeah. Last Alabama. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? I was like, you got Google. <laughs> <laughs> they hate that boy, yeah. don't they? Oh man, we got seventy three national championships. <laughs> so we're going. Who who are we picking now? I've lost track. <laughs> So <laughs> Michigan, you, 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 you pick Notre Dame over. Well, now, I know now, that. Now we're doing Nebraska, Michigan, the two dumpster fires. I'm going Nebraska. Ooh. Hey, kid. Way to step out there. I'm going Michigan. Yeah. <laughs> Not Nebraska. Probably for the rest of the year. You're going to go Michigan? Yeah. We're going to differ again. Yes. I'm going Nebraska. Good. I need to catch up. <laughs> Boston College, number 23 in the nation, at Purdue. You know, Purdue's not a pushover. Yeah, they're 0 3. <laughs> Boston College. <laughs> Talked him right into that one. <laughs> Better go BC over here as well. Yeah, BC. <laughs> should have just shut up because I was going the other way. <laughs> you should have just, that, was, that was number four for you right there. So, Robin Terry? BC. BC. BC, BC. Yeah. Next one. Ooh, the, the big matchup. Jimbo. <laughs> going to Tuscaloosa. Bama. Roll tide. Yeah, number 22, Texas A&M. They're ranked. Uh, number one, Alabama. Alabama. Uh, Minstrel flow. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, Rob. Why haven't you ever used that one before? Well, <laughs> the time when was the right, Terry. <laughs> yes, I will go Alabama. Warrior, let's drink. Thanks for listening to the Sooner Football Fans Podcast. Hit the subscribe button right now on whatever app you're listening to to download every episode as they come out. Check us out on Twitter and Facebook and on YouTube. Boomer Sooner. <laughs>